in this video we're just going to take a look at using processing in Python mode and get a feel for how it works and uh, just kind of review what we looked at in class quickly that was kind of you know a fast kind of introduction to the to how processing in Python work so if you've uh, downloaded and installed processing you just need to open it and set it make sure you've set it to Python mode if you haven't downloaded it and installed it you can check the uh, other tutorials for how to get set up this is the Python or the processing website if you just uh, go to the main processing page you'll be on the main page where you know the reference manual also exists but that reference manual is actually for the Java version there's lots of good information in there I don't know that the Python uh, documentation is always as complete so you might actually end up looking at the other reference manuals sometimes but just know that it's in a different language these these uh, videos here um, are also excellent resources but they mainly focus on I think the older ones are Java and then the latest ones are JavaScript but nonetheless they really go into uh, various topics and explain other things that are you know really interesting so you you could certainly uh, get a lot out of them but again you'll just have to remember that the language will be different and you'll have to kind of make some of those changes to kind of translate it to the Python version the tab I just clicked gets us into the Python version of the documentation and there's both tutorials here uh, and the reference manual and so I would strongly recommend having this reference manual open um, whenever you're working on processing and the other resource for getting started is also I would also say is the examples folder that exists uh, for processing and because we're in Python mode we're seeing the actual Python versions of the uh, of the uh, examples okay so I think in class we quickly looked at uh, a few of these the game of life for instance and you can see this is in Python it's the, the Python version of the function and if we run the code we'll see uh, Conway's game of life running and this you know this is a great resource this is a great way to you know get a feel for how things work and uh, what's going on and, and um, learning about uh, learning about various things you know of course there is something to be said for trying to figure out things before you look at other people's code so you'll just have to kind of gauge when you're going to explore and when you're going to try to solve a problem on your own without uh, kind of googling or going directly to whatever the answer might be so let's just get started with how we draw in, in processing I'm going to open this um, documentation page for the rectangle command rect and I'm just going to copy that code and paste it in here remember that processing in a way is really just a graphical addition to Python we're still working with the Python programming language but a function like rect doesn't exist in Python uh, r in regular Python um, and so we have something that allows us to draw a rectangle which is kind of like the graphical library that processing has added for us we can do a lot more than that but that's one way to think about it so we see this rectangle being drawn on this rather small screen and if we're wondering what these three param or four uh, different parameters are doing, we would go down here and look at what the syntax is, and um, these explain what the parameters are. It turns out that in uh, in processing, we're looking at a screen that has the origin in the top left corner. So when we're drawing a rectangle that has the position of x equals 30 y equals 20 that's very close to the origin but the origin is up here rather than down at the bottom bottom left so x is you know works as it normally does if you're used to the origin being at the bottom corner but y is uh, equal to 0 at the top of the screen in the top left corner and as y increases in a positive manner uh, it it's goes down so if I were to change this to 220 you'll see that rectangle move down on the screen 
So origin is top left, and you get used to that fairly quickly. That's not really a big deal. This size command allows you to change the size of the window that uh, first is is opened when you first run the code. This this you can only run once at the beginning of your uh, beginning of your program. Okay, so I'll just keep going. I think we looked at drawing something. I'll draw an ellipse in the same position as the rectangle and you can see that the ellipse despite having the same x and y coordinates is not position positioned exactly the same so what's happening here um, the rectangle is uh, being positioned by the upper left corner so when we look at the uh, x and y coordinates we're talking about this point in particular the top left like the screen the origins top left so the kind of uh, positioning point on the rectangle is top left as well. So that's actually the coordinates 30, uh, x equals 30, y equals 220. But when we draw an ellipse, the kind of control point or the positioning point is going to be the center of the ellipse. So what we're going to see is an ellipse that has a center point right at that corner. And you can kind of see that that's the case. It's a little hard to tell because, of course, the ellipse is the ellipse is drawn second. If we look at the flow here of the code going from top to bottom, rectangle is being drawn first. So the rectangle appears on the canvas, and then the ellipse appears on top of it because it's being drawn second. So we can't see this corner. And if we want to kind of see it, of course, we could flip that and do it that way. So now we can see that this corner is kind of right there on the, on the top, uh, sorry, in the, in the center of the circle. Of course, this is drawing as a circle. This question came up in class. This is an ellipse, but it looks like a circle because we're using a, a diameter that is the same as, so this this is the x and the y of the center. This is the x of the dimension, so the width, and this is the height. Um, so currently, the diameter and the, uh, the diameter and the, uh, the sorry, the horizontal diameter and I guess the vertical diameter, if you want to call that, they are the same. It was 50-50. I'm just going to change that and redraw it and you'll see that's, you know, there's your ellipse shape now because the two dimensions are not the same. So I'm just going to continue. I'm going to use the fill command. These are all in the manual. So if you're at all wondering what these are later on, you just go and find them in the manual. The fill command, uh, is a way of of uh, drawing a color inside the shape so it uses the RGB um, uh, colors so we're going to combine light in three components of red green and blue it's additive color mixing so that's red full red so the number uh, that you put here can range from 0 to 255 so it's an 8-bit number so that's all red no green, no blue. So we'll see a red ellipse and a red square. And it's like we've picked up a marker. We've, we're filling these shapes with this color of the marker that we picked up. And that color remains until it's changed. So the ellipse was filled with the red. Um, I changed that to green before I drew the rectangle. So now the rectangle is green. Anything drawn after this rectangle will continue to be green until we change it again. The um, outline remains. You can see still there's an outline there. It's a black outline. That's referred to as the stroke. And there's different things you can do to the stroke. Um, you can change the width of it. You can change the color. Again, all, all in the manual. You can see in this example, they're changing the stroke of this rectangle to a color that's mo a lot of red and some green and no blue. If you want to select colors, there is a tool for that, um, the color selector under the tools. So you can just select a color here and you'll see a corresponding red, green, and blue amount to, uh, to obtain that color. So I'm not sure if we got green or yellow here, but if you were to copy these in here, 226, 247, 90.
247, I think it was 90. Then we'll see that color in our rectangle. So, so far, everything that we've been doing is kind of in this mode of running the sketch uh, once and seeing some kind of result with no animation. There's, there's no functions in this sketch or this program, you'll notice. And um, so what Python and processing are doing here is when we hit the, the run button, it just goes from the top down to the bottom and, and runs each of the commands in turn and, and draws this. And then it completes. There's nothing that can be done at this point. We can't detect any kind of mouse press or anything like that. So I'm going to make a quick change. So I'm going to change it to run a little more dynamically. And what you can see here is I've added two functions. The setup function is the first thing that uh, processing will run. It, it, there might be some code above here that initializes some global variables, so it would run that first. But it then runs setup and uh, once. So it establishes a new screen of size 800 by 600. And then it starts drawing, it starts running the draw function repeatedly um, at the frame rate of whatever the frame rate is that this drawing uh, is running at. So probably at 60 frames per second if you haven't modified it. So we'll just look at what that looks like. I mean, this currently looks exactly the same. It doesn't, you might not, you know, we can't tell, but it is redrawing the screen over and over again. Um, I'll do, I'll just create an, an X variable. It's a global variable. So this unfortunately is the situation that we kind of have to get used to. We do have to create variables, global variables and processing frequently, at least for the time being. Um, so I'm going to use this global variable to position the ellipse and you can see it there. Um, I'll just run that. You'll see there's no errors. So the ellipse has kind of moved over to the side. If I, if I change that variable and run it again, you'll see that it's kind of, um, moved the ellipse from the edge over to the, you know, over a hundred pixels. So the, uh, animation I'd like to accomplish is maybe to have it kind of scrolling across the screen and this is where our understanding of global variables gets becomes a bit important. Let's move it 10 pixels every time. This is going to be a problem. We're going to see something happen here. So unbound local error local variable x reference before assignment. This is strange because this is working fine, right? So something's happened here that's caused this to become an error even though we know this variable exists up here and it was running fine until we tried to modify it. But this is the rule about how global variables work in Python. So Python has, you know, an interesting approach to this. You can't modify global variables until you use the global keyword. You might be surprised to, to realize that the first case where we were using it without modifying it, it worked fine. It's kind of a little kind of um, additional part of the rule is that if you want to just read this global variable, you want to access the value and, and read it and not modify it, then you're allowed to do that. That's no problem. It's only when you go to modify it that you actually need to have, have told Python, yeah, you know what, this is a global variable. I realize that. I'm going to start modifying it. Let me do that. You know, um, this kind of gives us permission to modify it. Okay, so that's kind of a, an extension to our understanding of what global variables uh, how the rules work. And there you can see that um, ellipse is moving to the right. I'll just move it one pixel at a time. You can see this strange feature here that's being kind of smeared across the screen. That's really just the, it's just the stroke that being left behind as each new ellipse is being drawn one pixel to the right. And so, you know, one easy way to deal with that is to simply erase the screen entirely. Might, might not, certainly might not be the most efficient way to deal with this, but this is going to be our solution for now. Just erase the whole screen, fill it with this gray color. This gray color here is just 200, 200, 200. Turns out I can just use a single value if I want to work with grayscale. And erase that and then modify or erase the screen entirely and redraw the new ellipse at the new position. Okay, so we positioned it initially at 100 pixels, and we then 
drew it at, I guess we modified it first to move it over one pixel. So we initially drew the ellipse at x equals 101. Um, and then a moment later, you know, the frame redrew itself. You can see it's moving about, I guess, about 700 pixels in the, you know, few seconds that we're watching it here. It gives you a rough idea of how quickly the frames are running behind the scenes. But that allows us to animate the, the ellipse. Um, I'm just going to modify how I change the variable. So let's continue to draw this ellipse at variable global variable x and let's modify it instead using this function called mouse pressed. So, so remember we have to say that it's global and I'll just modify it by a bit more than just one because it'll be hard to see. So this is not going to run continuously you can see it's not running in the draw loop, so it's not moving. When does this actually uh, execute? Well, it's a built-in function. If we go back to our manual and look for mouse pressed, we'll find it with all of these other functions that are dealing with input. So, you know, we can deal with the mouse, with the keyboard, um, through these other functions, and when we look at our sketch here you can hopefully you can tell I'm clicking there and each time I click uh, we're redrawing the uh, ellipse in a new position the the modification of the variable occurs here so when I click mouse press the function mouse press executes I kind of uh, get permission to modify the X and I increase it by five and then a moment later after this is finished, a moment later the draw loop is going to be told to run again because remember it's running at 60 frames per second. Every 60th of a second this draw loop has to run again. So it runs again but this x variable is different than it was on the last one so we see on the last you know execution of the draw loop so we see that ellipse move to the right five pixels. That's you know our first kind of bit of interaction. We can do that in other ways. There's actually a variable that that actually stores where the X, where the mouse is at any point in time. So this is another way to deal with how we can uh, interact or create interactive um, drawings. You can see as I move my mouse, the ellipse is redrawn to a new position. You can kind of see it lagging there. I can move my X, my mouse faster than the the frame rate is is kind of catching up but uh, you can see it kind of stays right underneath, at least in the X dimension, it stays right underneath the, uh, stays in line with the, with the mouse. So I think that kind of covers everything that we talked about in our really fast overview of how processing works in class. And uh, it gives you some good starting points. I think, you know, at this point, uh, the tutorials are really useful and it'd be worth looking at those and kind of working through the code yourself in a, in a slower fashion. Certainly coordinate systems and shapes. Um, uh, looking at the, this getting, even the getting started page, though I think most of that is probably fairly, fairly uh, well understood at this point. But um, all of these, all of these uh, tutorials on the top here, as well as dealing with, uh, you might want to look at the color, um, tutorial as well and even this interactive interactivity tutorial all of those tutorials I think are great starting points for working with processing and getting a, a feel for how it works and what you can do with it